you, Nick. So prayer requests tonight. I notice we're missing Richard and Trish, so we'll keep them lifted up in our prayers. We pray for John. John's just feeling so, so, so we'll keep John lifted up in our prayers. Of course, our president and those that are in authority over us, Marie. Well, Richard took a COVID test and he can... Yes, that was a praise of the Lord. Richard, yeah, he, t I was, I was down in Rochdale someplace and didn't have phone service. So he left me a voicemail and he said that I just wanted to let you know I had a COVID test and it came back negative and I was not surprised a bit. I, didn't think so. So, but that is, that's a praise the Lord also. Janet? My husband goes for uh, an MRI on October 12th, and we've been dealing with mental, mental issues for a few years now. And yesterday he asked me if he took mayonnaise on his sandwich. He's making a sandwich. He couldn't remember if he liked mayonnaise or not. And who's the. Your husband, Jerry. Okay, we'll keep Jerry lifted up. Yeah. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Amen. Amen. That's the scripture that the Lord said. The memory of the righteous is blessed. So that's, that's what we'll stand on, okay? Amen. Praise God. Owen's doing very well, our little grandson. Praise God. We're just so, we're glad that he's here with us. Praise the Lord. Eleanor went home with her mommy today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we love it when she comes and stays. She gives Michelle a lot of joy, that's for sure. Praise God. Any other prayer requests tonight? We keep Sam, keep Sam and our missionaries lifted up and our pastors. You know, we're starting to see on Facebook, we're starting to see a lot of pastors that are joining us and joining in and taking our teachings all over the world. So we're, we're glad to have them along with us. So we'll just keep them lifted up also. Praise God. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, we stand here before the throne of grace. And we thank you, Father, for the privilege, for the absolute honor to stand here and speak with you about things and to ask you, Lord, to intervene in the affairs that concern us and the affairs that concern this, this church and those that call this place their home, those people that, Father, that follow us online, Father, we just, we thank you. We're, we're so grateful for them, Father. First of all, as you said, Father, that we lift up those that are in authority over us, our president and our vice president, and for the judges, Father, and for those that call on your name, those that know you, Father, we, we lift them up to you, Father, to continue to give them revelation knowledge, continue, Father, your presence, your overwhelming presence, just your hand upon them as as you navigate, the heart of the king is in the hand of God, and you control it like a river. Those that are in authority over us, Father, we, we agree with you in Scripture that you are in control, Father. You have all of this all mapped out. You have it all planned out, how you are going to bring it to a conclusion. And, Father, we pray for their protection. We pray for their safety. And, Father, we, just, we thank you for them. We pray for Jerry tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, heal his mind. The memory of the righteous is blessed. And Lord, we, we believe that you'll do a mighty work in Jerry, that things will start coming back to his remembrance, that things will start coming, coming to, to him in clarity. We thank you for his wife, Janet, who's faithful here, Lord. We thank you for her. And Lord, strengthen her. Give her insight and wisdom. Give her revelation knowledge on the things that she needs to know and comfort her, Father, during this time. And Lord, we thank you for Richard and Trish who are out tonight. 
Father, we just we thank you for their for their dedication here. We thank you, Father, for their love and for their prayers. And Father, we just lift them up to you tonight. They be ever whole. They be ever healed in Jesus' name. We pray for John tonight, Father. We we just speak words of life. We speak the blood of Jesus Christ on him. And we know, Father, that healing is in your hands and it flows from your throne. We know it's flowing into John right now, Father, and we thank you for that. We bless you, Lord, for that. And we just, we all agree in Jesus' name that he is every whit whole and every whit healed. And we believe you and thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for Sam and for, for Justine and for Bethany who are over in Uganda. We, we thank you, Father, for, for the ministry that you have for them. We just thank you, Father, that you're continuing to open doors for Sam to minister the gospel, to bring people into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that healing signs and wonders will be wrought by his hands because he preaches your word, Father, and you'll confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And we bless him, we bless his wife and his little girl, and we thank you, we thank you that they're part of this church. We thank you, Father, that they share the same vision, share the same heart. Father, we pray for the pastors who watch us all over the world. Father, that they just continue to stand strong in the faith, preach your word, stay true to what you have told them to do, stay true to their calling. Father, we ask that you bring many people into their congregations, people that are hurt, the sick, the halt, the lame, the blind, that you bring all these into their congregations so that they may have eyes to see, ears to hear, the lame will walk, the dead will be raised. We believe you for all these things, Father. And we submit all these things here at your throne. Now, Father, we turn this time over to you Holy Spirit, have your way tonight as we open the scriptures. Show us things that we've never seen before. Link scriptures together because you are the author of the word. Jesus, thank you so much for joining us tonight and standing here in our midst. We love you, Lord. We praise you and we bless you. All these things we pray, all these things we speak before the throne of grace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's turn over here tonight to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. This will go a little bit with what we had on our morning devotional this morning with Andrew Murray about dying to self. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Everybody has this passage of scripture underlined in their Bibles. But let's bring it to light and let's talk about this a little bit tonight. I am crucified with Christ. That's past tense, is it not? I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in this earth suit, in my body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, one of the things that we need to talk about and one of the things that we need to bring to light is we are not crucifying ourselves over and over and over and over again. We have been already, past tense, crucified with Christ. It is done. It's finished. Just as Jesus said as he hung on the cross, it is finished. Tetelestai. Paid in full. Taken care of. All done. All over. So, the way that we should see ourselves, that the old man, the old sin nature, who we used to be, has been crucified. He's on the cross. He's not part of us anymore. 
But what we have to do as Christians, we need to draw a line in the sand because what happens a lot of times is the old man wants to get down off the cross and he wants to take care of things. Which brings us to the passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. And we'll pick up here in verse 39. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Now don't you know that was a temptation to Jesus? Because he had submitted his self, he had submitted his life, he had submitted everything into the hand of God. And he had submitted himself into the will of God. And it was the will of God, the plan of God, the provision of God, that Jesus Christ be crucified. That was the plan. That he give himself an innocent sacrifice for you and for me. So, the temptation, if, remember the temptation in the wilderness? If you're the Son of God, if you are who you say that you are, take these stones and make them bread. If you are the Son of God, display your power, take it upon yourself, do something. If you're truly the Son of God, come down off the cross. This is the temptation. And this is the temptation for you and I. Anytime that we try to take matters into our own hands, we take them out of God's hands. You've heard that. It's been said so many times that people think it's Scripture, but it's not. The Lord helps those who help themselves. That is absolutely against everything that is written in Scripture. That is not Scripture. That is diametrically opposed to Scripture. No, the Lord does not. No, the Lord helps the helpless. When I am weak... He is strong. A lot of times we don't see God's hand move in our lives. It is because we have bound his hands by taking matters into our own hands. I'm going to do this. Well, you've just allowed he that has been or she that has been crucified with Christ to come back down off of the cross and try to take matters into their own hands. When a person was crucified, they lost all of their rights. Anybody could do anything when they were hung on the tree. That meant they had no rights whatsoever. They could throw a bucket of filth on them. They could mock them. They could do whatever they wanted to do because they had lost all their rights. That's why the scripture says, cursed is anyone who hangeth on a tree. He was cursed. He was cursed with a curse. That's why the curse of sin has been broken, because innocent blood was shed. The soul that sins must die. Isn't that what Scripture says? Who died? Who died in our place? Jesus Christ. He died that I might live. And now the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of knowing that I do not have to stand up for myself. I allow God to be my shield. You know, we say that a lot. Well, the Lord's my strength. The Lord's my shield. The Lord's my helper. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is all of these things. But yet at the same time, we say, I'm going to do this. 
Now, if we truly had faith in those things that we just said, the Lord's my Redeemer, the Lord takes care of me, the Lord will work this out, the Lord will do all of these things, then we would leave the person up there crucified. We deny ourselves. We deny ourselves. We deny our rights. This is what it means to be self-denial. We understand that I am one with Jesus Christ. That is who I am now. The old man was crucified. He died, was buried, because we're buried with him in baptism, right? That's what, that's what baptism is. It's a celebration. You're going to your own funeral. The old man died. And the, by immersing in water is showing that we were laid to rest. We were laid in the tomb with Jesus Christ when he was laid in the tomb. And then when he rose again, we rose again with him. The old person is gone. Now, we still have the mindset. We still have those things that we still have to deal with, the old way of thinking. That's why we have to renew our minds. And every man is drawn away by his own lusts. By his own lust. That's where sin, sin is conceived by lust. So thinking that, well, I'm going to take care of this, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to go after this, what needs to happen, there needs to be a line drawn to say, no, you're not coming down off the cross. Today and every day, I take up my cross and I follow him. It's a place of death, understanding that that person is dead. We deny that person. Now, what happened when Peter denied the Lord? He accepted, or, or what he did was, he placed himself, he placed self, he acknowledged self, and denied the Lord. He had it backwards. He should have acknowledged his union with Jesus and denied himself. It's really interesting when Peter, you know, when Peter was standing out there warming himself, John had went in. John was known to the Pharisees. John was known to the high priest. And John went in to see the end. Peter was there. They didn't do anything to John, and they knew that John was one of his disciples. When we deny self, we are saying, I am no longer in union with that person who I used to be. I've severed all ties. That person is gone. I don't even acknowledge that I know him. He's been crucified. He's done. He's gone. Now, if I want to, and I choose to, I can bring him back down off the cross and let him try to deal with things. But there again, now, who's my strength? Where does my strength lie? My strength lies in the Lord. So, Romans chapter 6, I've quoted these, I'll just read them off to you. Romans chapter 6, and we'll just pick up here in verse 4. Oh, we'll just start in verse 1. Sorry, Brian. We'll just start in verse 1. I just keep going back up. What shall we say then? Shall we just continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? We're dead to it. We went to our own funeral when we were baptized. Can you imagine? When we, we went to our own funeral, the old man was passed away. The devil was there too and said, 
that person's dead. You have no power now over me because the person that you used to have power over is dead. He's gone. And now, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new, and all things are of God. Now, the old man passed away. So, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We live with him, we died with him. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, and that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life, the newness of this life. See, this sets people free from the bondage of habits, of addictions, of, of, of things that used to be in the past. Think of Saul. Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus, he murdered Christians, right? Put them in prison. Till he got knocked off his horse one day on the road to Damascus. Blinding light came out. And then that's when Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He didn't say the Christians. He said, why do you persecute me? Jesus took it very seriously and very personally. Why do you persecute me? And then he said, who art thou? Lord. <laughs> what do you want me to do? So he changed his mind real quick. Saul of Tarsus died that day, and he became Paul. Saul means great. Paul means small. So he changed his name to change, to change what had happened on the road to Damascus. There was a change. Saul of Tarsus died. Paul the Apostle was born. And then through all of the epistles and all through Scripture, we could see how he related himself, not as who was once, but his union with Christ. And that's how we should always see ourselves in union with Jesus Christ. Verse 7, For he that is dead is free from sin. We are free, free from sin. Sin has no more dominion over us. Now we can choose, we can choose to sin. Can a Christian sin? Sure can. We can choose to. You know, whatever is not of faith is sin. That's pretty strong. So that means any time that you want to take matters into your own hands, well, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to say this, or I'm going to try to manipulate this situation by doing this. You know, that's not faith. It's not. What's faith then? Faith is saying, Father, I don't understand what's going on right now. Father, I don't understand these people have come against me or this, this plot against me or whatever is going on in, in this situation. But this I will do. I will trust you. I will not allow the old man to come down off the cross. I will not take matters into my own hands. Lord, I will trust you. The greatest example that we can see of this is David and David in the Psalms. When David, when he was just a boy, 
Remember, he was called by Samuel, and Samuel dumped oil on him and anointed him to be king, even while Saul was still king. And for 30 some years, it took 30 some years for David to finally come to a, a place where he was king. But he never took matters into his own hands. Remember when he was in the caves and Saul went in to go and relieve himself and David cut the hem of his garment off? He could have taken his life. But David repented himself and said, I could have took your life, but I'm leaving this in God's hands. I'm leaving this in God's hands. And again, when Saul was sleeping, he cut the hem off of his garment again and said, I could have took your life again, but I'm not going to do that. Even though all the 400 mighty men that were with him said, look, God's delivered Saul into your hands. And he said, no, no, that's not the way that the Lord wants it to work out. How can I touch God's anointed? He said, no, I'm going to let God deal with it. We have several people that are supposed to be doing work for us. And this is where this message all comes out from, because I thought, well, you know what I need to do? I'm going to make a phone call and I'm just going to tell these people that they need to get on the ball and they need to do this. And, you know, we're going to demand our money back and blah, blah, blah. And the Lord spoke up and he said, don't you trust me? And I said, well, of course I do. He said, even with the smallest of things. And I said, well, this is not small to me. He said, by everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. He said, Ryan, why don't you talk to me about it? He said, don't you think that I can move? Don't you think I can do this better than you throwing a fit? Better than you taking matters into your own hands? Because then... You've bound mine up, and I can't work in this, because now you have your problem. And I said, yes, Lord. He said, so what's bothering you? So I did. I talked to him. I said, these are the, some of the things. That's, these are some of the things that I need to talk with you about. So as we rode down the road together, I talked with him. I said, this. I said, Lord, this is, this is a concern. And he said, yeah. He says, and this is what I'm going to do. I'll take care of that. I said, okay. I said, this is a concern. He said, yes, I know. He says, I'll take care of that. I said, okay. And then it got easier. And then it got easier. And then I just started, hey, all of these things. And he says, that's what I've always wanted. In all of your ways, acknowledge my presence and I'll direct your path. I'll take care of these things. Draw a line in the sand. Make your decision to say, you know what? Because there is a God, I've decided that I am going to let him handle the things that come into my life. The injustices. The wrongs. The everything that comes into my life. Is life fair? No. Life's not fair. Anybody that's been on this planet for any amount of time knows that life's not fair. It's not. We live on a fallen planet with fallen people, and, and that's just the way that it is right now. Now, someday, will the God of heaven make all right? <laughs> yes, he will. He sure will. But what we, our part now, is to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let's turn back here, James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Isn't that what Jesus was doing? He humbled himself and became obedient, even unto death, even the death of the cross. And now God has highly exalted him. See, Jesus is our example. He's always our example. Jesus submitted himself to the will of God, even to the point of death, the death of the cross. And what did God do? God highly exalted him. 
and give him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether they want to or not. There's coming a day. We bow before the throne of grace. But there is also the same throne, and it's the great white throne judgment. And there's going to be those that have to bow, whether they want to or not. And they will confess, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. We do it through love, through adoration, and through submission. They'll do it because they are forced. So James chapter 4 James chapter 4, eh, we'll just pick up here in verse 7, ah, verse 6, sorry. Nick always laughs when I do that because I always read, <laughs> read back up. James 4, 6, he says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud. Do you know when you take something, a matter into your own hands, you're being proud? That's pride. That's the original sin. That's pride. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. I'll do this. I'll take care of this. No, he giveth more grace. Wherefore God saith, he resists the proud, but he giveth grace, God's unmerited favor. God on your side, God working out all the plans, all the details, working behind the scenes, working miraculously for your benefit. That's what grace is. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. But you can humble yourself and God gives it freely. And he gives more grace as we submit to him. So, God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. I'm submitted to God. I have no rights. I'm submitted to his will. I've taken my will, and as an offering, I give it to him. Here, Lord, here's my will. Not my will, but your will be done. You do whatever you want to do with my life. It's not mine anyway. You bought it. Where do we get the audacity to think sometimes that this is my life? Really? To stand there and look at Calvary and watch the blood flow down Calvary's cross. A broken, beaten Savior to think, oh, this is my life. No. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Sin has no power over you. You can't tempt dead people. You know that? You can't tempt a dead person because they're dead. They're dead to sin, they're dead to the world, they're dead to all of it. I'm crucified to the world, I'm crucified to the devil, I'm crucified to sin, I'm dead. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Those that are trying to do things on their own, those that are trying to stand for themselves, those that are trying to, God helps them who help themselves. No, he does not. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit. I'd like to know who started that. I really would. Boy, it sounds good, but it is. Just, that's a lie. Verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he'll lift you up. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He, he and he alone, he is our strength. When I'm weak, he's strong. What are you going to do with a person like that? 
What are you going to do with the person that submitted themselves to God? There's nothing you can do because now you're fighting against God. I'm submitted to God. You can do whatever you want to. You can say whatever you want to. The old man is dead. He's not going to come out in retaliation. So now I'm standing and God is my shield. Now I'm standing and God is my helper. Now I'm standing and God's my strength. Because I'm doing it out of submission. And I'm doing it in, in humility. If there wasn't a God, then that would be the foolish thing to do. But since there is a God, and he loves you and cares for you, he numbers the hairs on your head. He knows you're rising up and you're going, going forth. He knows when you go to bed. He watches over you. He's always mindful of you. Think of David when he said that. He says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? When you think about the galaxies, when you think about the stars, when you think about what God has created, you know, we are a speck. Our galaxy is one of trillions of galaxies. Our planet is one of multi-trillions. Now we're talking about how big God is and how big the universe is. And yet he is so personal, he cares about everything about you. And he can do that with every single person. Every single person on the planet. That is how big God is. That is, it, it's just, and what is it that he's mindful? His mind is full of thoughts about you, about you. That's why Paul said, in everything, in everything, talk to God about it. Everything. Don't try to take this on, you know, life will kill you. <laughs> it will. So we're supposed to take everything to God, everything. Take it to him and, and lay it before him and say, Lord, this is what's going on. Do you think that poor old God is uninformed and he doesn't know what's going on? Of course he knows what's going on. But you know what? He wants you to commune with him and talk with him about it. That's prayer. And one of the things the Lord showed me this week, and it was just so powerful... You know, God saves every single prayer, every single time. You know how precious that is? Every single time that you talk to God, he saves it up and he stores it up and he holds it. It's just like the tears of the saints. He bottles the tears of the saints. That's how precious they are to him. Every time that you shed a tear, you know, God, he takes and he's bottled that up. Every time that you've talked with him about something, you know that God, he finds that it's just like a letter that you've wrote to him and he saves it. And I can prove that to you through scripture because in the book of Revelation, all the prayers of all the saints are poured out as an offering unto God, as a remembrance. He remembers all that. He says, look how precious these are. And I have withheld every prayer, every time that you've ever talked to me, every time you've turned to me, every time that you've spoken with me, I have held these, I've cherished them, and now I'm going to pour all of them out. And it's an offering of praise. Isn't that awesome? That's what God does with our prayers. All right. So humble yourselves, and I want to link these two scriptures together because this is awesome. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he, he shall lift you up. He'll do it. He'll pick you up. Lord, I feel like I've been knocked down. Okay, I'll pick you up. I'll lift you up. That's what it says here. Now, let's tie this in with 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter five, and this kind of mirrors what James was talking about over in his gospel. 
First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, well, let's go to verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yet all of you be subject one to another, be clothed with humility, subject to one another, looking out for the other person, preferring the other person before yourself. Your well-being, your spiritual growth, your relationship with Jesus Christ, all of those things we put before ourselves, before our own needs. Why? Why can we do that? Because God takes care of us. Because God takes care of me. So I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of, and God will take care of me. God will make sure that, that I'm taken care of. Be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud. But, and, giveth grace to the humble. He said, you've humbled yourself to me, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of you supernaturally. Verse 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. Hold your place there. Let's go back to James. The Lord showed me this. I thought this was awesome. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That's James chapter 4, verse 10. Peter brings it out and says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. His time. Not our time. His time. He'll take care of it. This is where faith comes in. It takes faith to please God. Right? And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So this is faith saying, Lord, I'm going to come to you. And Lord, I'm humbling myself. I'm leaving the old man on the cross. I'm not going to try to take matters into my own hands. I'm going to let you handle it. And that's faith. That is faith. Believing that God's going to take care of something without me placing my hand on it. Now, if he tells you to do something in the spirit, or if he leads and guides you to do something, then that's when we act. But first, we've submitted ourselves and humbled ourselves to God. So that way we know that now we are led by the Spirit. We're led by His presence. How are we led by His presence? We spend time in His presence. Then we know the presence. I was sharing with Janet a little earlier. She asked me how my day went. I said, it was a great, it was a wonderful day at work. I went to some people's house, and there was a lady that was there. And just like I've been sharing with you, when you spend time in the presence of God, and God's presence is so heavy on you, people will start pouring their hearts out to you because they recognize the presence of God. So I walked in, and I was working on this person's internet, and this woman just broke down and started, and she just started pouring her heart out. She told me, you know, some of the things in her past, and she told me some of the things that had happened in her life, and she was so broken. And she said something. She said, you know, she said, I know I'm going to have to answer for all of those things one day before Jesus Christ. And I looked at her, and the Lord, man, it was God. I started crying because I just stood there, and I did. I started, because this woman was so broken. And I looked at her and I said, dear heart, I said, the truth is that you now belong to Jesus Christ. You don't stand before a throne of judgment, but before a throne of grace. I said, there is no condemnation. I said, 
all the wrath and all the judgment was poured out on Jesus and you've accepted him. I said, no. I said, there is no judgment for you. Now it's just the throne of grace. And that woman, you should have seen her face. She lit up. I mean, you could just see it. And it just changed everything. And she just broke down and cried. Because imagine the bondage of thinking that one day you're going to have to stand before the Savior in judgment. Yes, we all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, that is scripture. But not for sin, because sin's been judged. It was judged at Calvary. We as Christians, we stand at the judgment seat at the throne of mercy and of grace. And it's a rewards. It's the Bema seat. It's where we go and we stand. And the Lord said, these are the things that were done in the body. You have presented your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And since you've done this, there are crowns that are going to be given out. A crown of righteousness for those that a love is appearing. A crown for those that evangelize. A crown for those that take care of sheep. Those crowns are going to be given out. And what are we going to do with them? Well, we can see in Revelation what you do with them. You cast them at his feet. And sad to say, there's some Christians that aren't going to have any crowns to cast at his feet because it's going to be wood, hay, and stubble. Look, Lord, what I've done for you. He says, let's pass it through the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a handful of ashes. <laughs> They're going to be throwing ashes at his feet. There's some people that, I'm being serious, there's some people that are going to say, look at this great ministry and all of these buildings and all this that we've built for you, Lord, and it's going to pass through and it's going to burn up. And the Lord's just going to stand there and say, well, your soul's saved. And then there's going to be people who didn't think they did anything for the Lord, and they're really going to be surprised. And the Lord's going to hand them crowns and say, remember that time when you stayed on your face? Remember your time when you prayed for this. Remember when you talked to this person. Remember when I asked you to do this and you did it. So, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. Under the mighty hand of God. God who created the whole universe. God who cares so much about you. Don't you think... That he who gave his son for you won't take care of you. Instead of taking matters into our own hands, we submit ourselves to God. We cast all, verse 7, casting all, all of them. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. And he wants to help you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to move heaven and earth. That's what he wants to do. So tonight, let's make a decision. Let's make that decision and make that call that, you know what, we're going to go to our own funeral. That old man passed away, the one that would take matters into their own hands, the one that would try to manipulate, the one that would try to do this, and the one that would try to do that, and I'm going to say that, and I'm going to do this, and if this person does this, then this is what I'm going to do, and I've got this whole plan all worked out, so that way we are going to take care of this. No. No, that person is dead. The person that used to do that is gone. And now what we do, Lord, this is what's going on. Lord, these are some of the things that's going on in my life. And I just want to talk with you about it. And I invite you to take care of these things by your, by your presence, by your power, by your spirit. I don't have to know how you're going to do it. I don't have to know when you're going to do it. All I know is, Lord, I'm inviting you in, and I know you are going to do it. Amen. Does that help everybody tonight? Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, we do love you, and we thank you. 
We thank you for the precious saints that have assembled themselves here. We thank you for all those that are watching us all over the world. Thank you for this word, Father. In this time that we live in right now, we live in, in such difficult times, Lord. We feel as though we ought to try to do something. We feel as though there's something that we could be doing. But Lord, the best place for us to be is on our knees. The best place to be, Father, is in your presence. Lord, all these things, we know they're in your hands. Lord, we know you care for us. Lord, we know that you, they have never, Scripture says, we've never seen the righteous beg bread. You'll take care of us, Lord. And we believe you. We trust you. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with eternity. We love you and we thank you and we bless you. And Lord, we thank you for these. You'll, you'll keep all of these safe until we gather around your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everybody have a good rest of the week. And we'll see everybody back here, Lord willing, on Sunday morning.